a lioness is in the throes of death at a rescue center. Then, when everything seems lost, she hears a series of roars. From that moment, the most unbelievable thing starts to happen. Sheila, the lioness, lay motionless in her enclosure. She was a mere shadow of herself. When she tried to tilt her head, she trembled a little. It was as if it was simply too heavy for her feeble muscles. Her fur was vibrant once upon a time, but it had lost all its luster, and she looked like she was too small for her skin. It hung in layers from her malnourished form. Sheila's breathing was labored, haggard even. Each inhalation was representative of her struggle for survival. Nearby, in his own enclosure, Khan paced anxiously. He was a fully grown male lion, deeply aware of Sheila's deteriorating condition. He watched as staff members at the rescue society rushed to Sheila's side. They whispered urgently to each other and administered medication, but the lioness remained motionless. Her spirit was fading with each passing moment. The whole center was cloaked with a heavy, somber shadow of despair. Still, Khan kept pacing. His golden eyes never left the lioness. It was as if he was living through every ache in every rasping breath with her. Occasionally, he growled, a soft rumble that seemed to emanate from the pit of his belly. Each time, Sheila tried to lift her head. This intensified Khan's pacing and made his agitation palpable. He pressed his giant frame against the chain-link fence. The two lions hadn't really met yet, but they shared somewhat of a bond after spending time together with the same neglectful owner. 15-month-old Sheila was so weak after having been used for photo ops and parties, and 6-year-old Khan had presumably chewed off the end of his tail because of malnourishment and stress. Misery does bring people together, and Khan seemed to be feeling every bit of Sheila's pain. Once the medication had been administered to Sheila, the staff focused on the next arduous task. They had to get food into the lioness. It happened by hand, and each morsel was a silent victory. They rolled up meatballs and coaxed her to eat, then followed more medications. They were in a war against toxoplasmosis and a severe vitamin A deficiency that raged through the lioness's body, and the staff refused to give up. Each one had made a silent, deeply personal commitment. They weren't going to give up until Sheila got better, or until the last flicker of life left her body. Over the weeks, the staff had monitored her progress carefully. When necessary, they adjusted their approach. One thing was for certain, Sheila was getting the best care available anywhere. Then, there was a glimmer of hope. It shone through the darkness that threatened to consume the lioness. Her eyes had been vacant for a while now, but when staff arrived at her enclosure on a Sunday morning, Sheila seemed more alert. Her eyes had a spark again, something the staff had thought they would never see again. And when a lion's eye sparked, it was something to behold. They held all the mysteries of the savannah in a throbbing yellow glow. As the days passed, the lioness's condition improved. It happened in small increments, and then, suddenly, she grew markedly stronger every day. Her muscles began to firm beneath her skin, and she lifted her head without effort. There was hope again. Sheila defied the odds, and Khan knew it. From his enclosure next door, he continued to stand vigil. Within a couple of weeks, Sheila was almost back to her old self, and Khan's bond with her deepened. When she finally managed to stand up on her own for the first time in months, he made the low, grumbling growl again, his way of showing his approval and support. At first, Sheila's movements were limited to a few short steps. On the other side of the chain-link fence, Khan mimicked her movements. The most important sign that the lioness was recovering was the return of her appetite. When she looked tired, Khan made a low chuff, his way of urging her to keep going. Then, the unthinkable happened. Sheila's condition started to deteriorate again, and this time, it was too rapid. Her sudden and uncontrollable regression had the staff feeling afraid and helpless. Her breathing was the worst it had been, and her appetite disappeared altogether. An atmosphere of haunting finality cloaked her enclosure. 
The whole rescue center felt it. There was despair like never before. With pale and drawn faces, the staff gathered around the lioness's enclosure. They had done everything they knew how, and a sense of defeat hung heavy in the air. Everyone knew they would have to say goodbye to the lioness they had fought so hard to save, and they knew it would happen soon. In the adjoining enclosure, Khan's distress deepened too. The male lion was usually stoic, but he was becoming increasingly agitated. Each time she drew a labored breath, Khan growled softly as if he wanted to breathe for her while she struggled. He pressed his body even harder against the fence. His roars were always powerful, but now, as Sheila's condition deteriorated, they became mournful instead of powerful. Undoubtedly, he was feeling as powerless to do something for Sheila as the staff did. After a long Monday meeting, the staff decided to try again. They discussed ideas and brainstormed new treatment options. Each condition was carefully considered. Nothing was too far-fetched or out of bounds. The lioness was peering into the abyss, and they were her last line of defense. Vicky Kihei was the center's founder and also the voice of reason. Her steely inspiration and never-say-die attitude inspired the staff. Her instructions to the staff were clear. Reach out to everyone you know, anywhere in the world. Get as much advice as you can. Somewhere with someone is an answer. Phone calls were made and emails were sent. And then the waiting began. Hours became days. The staff worked tirelessly. They consumed every bit of relevant information, pored over research papers, and consulted with specialists. If they were going to lose the lioness, it was not going to be through a lack of effort. Then came the breakthrough. There was a new treatment option available to them. It was one sliver of light in the darkness. The staff sprang into action. Within a few hours, they implemented the new protocol. Each dose was administered, along with a silent prayer. While all of this was happening, Khan watched with glowing yellow eyes from his own enclosure. His gaze rested on Sheila with unwavering intensity. It took almost a week, but Sheila's condition started improving. Slowly, but surely, the lioness started to get better. The staff were getting concerned about Khan too. He prowled restlessly, day in and day out. His frustration was mounting, and this was never good for a lion in captivity. His powerful muscles were coiled with tension, and his thunderous roars reverberated through the rescue center. Each time Sheila's condition spiraled downward, his roars intensified. He began biting at the chain link fence. Every instinct screamed at him to tear down the barrier so he could gain access to the lioness. After a week of ups and downs, and amid a desperate flickering of hope, the lioness's health started to plummet with alarming speed. Then, she slipped into unconsciousness. It was heartbreaking for the staff to see her like this. This magnificent animal, an apex predator, and the throbbing heartbeat of the African savanna was now limp and lifeless. Hearts grew heavy with dread. The lioness's breaths grew so shallow that they were almost undetectable, and her pulse had weakened to the extent that it was almost untraceable. CPR and other life-saving measures were administered by desperate hands. It was all about reviving Sheila now. The air thickened with tension as the staff fought off the encroaching darkness. But Sheila remained unresponsive. Her body was giving up, and everybody knew it. Unless she found the will to fight back, there would be nothing else they could do. Suddenly, there was a flicker of movement. A faint tremor rippled through her body. It was the first subtle sign of life in hours. The staff watched with bated breath as her eyelids fluttered open. The lioness's eyes were dull and unfocused, but they were open. And this was a tremendous victory in itself. She was back from the brink, but far from out of the woods. The sheer relief of the moment brought tears to everybody's eyes. The fight to save the lioness was taking its toll on every member of the staff at the rescue center. Then, the most spectacular moment occurred. A sudden, deafening roar shattered the silence of the center. It was Khan, 
He wasn't roaring like a captive male lion. He was proclaiming his domain. His mighty voice had a primal intensity that demanded attention and respect. The roars sounded like they had been fetched from a place deep, deep inside. And they carried with them the history and spirit of the African savanna. They vibrated with ancient secrets, successful hunts, and nights under the African starlit expanse. The ground trembled each time he opened his mouth. His roars were emotion-filled prayers that refused to be ignored. Time seemed to stand still. Khan's golden mane was ablaze. His eyes bored into Sheila's depths. Then, a miraculous transformation started occurring. The lioness stirred as if she was answering an ancient call. Her eyes fluttered open and met Khan's. It was as if he was willing her to fight back. She had regained consciousness. Her spirit had been reignited by the mighty roars of the undisputed king of the wild. The lion's roars energized the rescue center staff too. They watched in awe as the lion, through the sheer force of will and the wildness of his roars, carried the lioness. She struggled but lifted her head. Her ears twitched and she looked around weakly. One by one, her senses came back online. Another ear-shattering roar from Khan had her ears following the direction of the sound. Salvation was in her grasp now, and still he willed her on. Staff whispered among themselves. The vet explained that they had just witnessed something remarkable. Each of Khan's thunderous roars had not only echoed through the rescue center, they affected Sheila's anatomy too. The sounds sparked a chain reaction. Her subconscious recognized the sound on a primeval level, and with each roar, her body released a surge of adrenaline through the lioness's body. It had lifted her heart rate and tensed her muscles. The best way to describe it, the vet explained, is by comparing it to a flipped switch. While they had fought with all the tools at their disposal to save the lioness, they had no access to her wild spirit. Only Khan had, and he'd used it to magnificent effect. It was clear that Sheila was now winning the battle against imminent death. The dullness in her eyes faded, she grew stronger, and her breathing improved. Her movements became steadier, and she finally rose from the bed of straw, which had been her battlefield for weeks. The reality of Khan's role in Sheila's recovery began to dawn on the staff at the rescue center. They had witnessed the power of the wild in action, and it had left them speechless. Then, when she was well enough, came the day the staff and Khan had been waiting for. The lioness was now well enough to be meeting her savior of sorts. As the barrier between their enclosures was opened, Sheila approached Khan with hesitant steps. He strolled over to her on stiff legs and nuzzled her gently. This was the moment hope trumped despair, the moment love became victorious over fear. Sheila fell in love with Khan the moment she saw him, and it's safe to say Khan had felt something for the lioness even before they actually met and their noses touched. Khan continued to play a remarkable role in Sheila's recovery. There were days when she was too weak to eat. He growled, nudged, pushed, and prodded until she, out of sheer exasperation, ate her fill. On other days, when her eyes threatened to fade to dullness again, he spoke to her in low grumbles. He never stopped. Khan only slept when Sheila did and woke up the moment she opened her eyes. He was her constant guardian, companion, and source of strength. It was something to behold. When the vet finally gave the lioness a clean bill of health, staff at the rescue center celebrated. They knew they had seen something very few people ever had the privilege of observing. They had seen the raw power of a male lion in action, not while hunting prey or protecting its territory, but while caring lovingly for his lioness. Sheila and Khan have been in the same enclosure since then. Staff at the rescue center are still watching her health carefully. She'd been a very sick lion, and her body wouldn't return to its own self in a day. It was going to take months, but 
there was no fear about the possibility of losing the lioness anymore. And it was clear, with Khan by her side, Sheila could survive anything else life chose to throw in her direction. The power and majesty of a fully grown male African lion is nearly impossible to describe. Have you ever seen one in the wild or experienced the power of their roars? Tell us about it in the comments. We'd love to hear. For now though, we're out of here. Catch you in the next video.